If you are currently experiencing wet frizz in your curly hair, I definitely feel your pain. It can be so hard to manage, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step wash day routine that is aimed at reducing wet frizz. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina, and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing simplified step-by-step -step tutorials and helping you problem solve with your curls. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so before you go because I make videos like this every single week. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I just wanted to preface this by saying that you don't have to do every single one of the steps that I mentioned in this routine. It's about an eight step routine, but it is designed to show you some of these things you can try if you are struggling with your curls. If you're experiencing a problem like wet frizz, then your hair is gonna need a little bit extra attention. But by no means do you have to do all of these things. You can just incorporate what works for you. Also, if you don't have damaged hair, you can skip quite a few of these steps and I'll mention that in the routine. So before we get started with the routine, let's first talk about what is wet frizz if you're not already familiar. So wet frizz is when your hair looks frizzy when it's wet. This is frizz that usually appears after you finish rinsing out your conditioner and during the styling process. It doesn't necessarily mean that there is a problem with your hair. It's not necessarily a bad thing. However, it can indicate some issues with your hair, but sometimes it's just how our hair is. My hair is healthy at this point and I still have wet frizz. It's not necessarily a bad thing. This this is more so to show you some things that you can try if you are looking to reduce it. Because a lot of times if your hair is frizzy when it's wet, when it dries, it usually is frizzy too. And the goal is not to completely get rid of frizz. We're all going to have frizz. I still have frizz after doing this routine. The goal is just to reduce it if that's the look that you're going for. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we're starting off in the shower. I'm actually going to be clarifying today, but before I do that, I'm going to go in with the Curl Wow Pre-Shampoo Detangler. This is totally an optional step, but I really recommend getting the knots out of your hair before you shampoo, especially if you're going to be clarifying because whenever you do a pre-shampoo treatment like this, it can help protect your hair from harsher shampoos like a clarifying shampoo. Just prevent your hair from getting stripped out and also help prevent further tangles. If you've ever tried to go in and shampoo your hair when it's super tangly, it just makes for a matted mess which can lead to more breakage, more damage, and more frizz. You can also just use a regular conditioner and then rinse it out before you shampoo. You don't have to have a special pre-shampoo detangler. Now it's time to clarify. I'm using a new clarifying shampoo. This is the Olaplex N4C Bond Building Clarifying Shampoo. This is going to save time by repairing your hair and by clarifying all in one step. Normally I would be doing a number three bond treatment and then shampooing and it's just a lot of steps. So this really simplifies it. This is not only going to remove buildup, which can accumulate on your hair from hard water minerals, also from products. Even if you use silicone free products, you can still get buildup from butters and oils and that can really cause wet frizz because your hair isn't able to absorb the products if it has that buildup in the way. If you haven't seen my hard water video, I definitely recommend checking it out. And this shampoo can remove hard water minerals. So many people have it in their home and they don't even realize it. It's one of the number one causes of wet frizz. Also, if your hair is damaged, it's going to be very frizzy. When my hair was damaged, I had so much wet frizz that I just could not tame. So this is also going to repair the broken bonds in your hair with that bond building technology. So killing two birds with one stone. And just a reminder, I am going to include alternative, more affordable options for all of these products that I'm using in the description box down below. So I'll include both the high end and the more affordable option for you. So here I wanted to show you the importance of conditioner. Look at how much wet frizz that I have just after shampooing. And this is because tangles can form at every step of your routine. At least for my hair type, my hair is kind of like Velcro. It tangles up at every single step. So even with detangling prior to shampooing, I still get tangles afterwards. That's what the wet frizz is from. It's totally normal though. All you have to do is just apply your conditioner and then detangle at that step again. For my conditioner, I'm actually gonna be using a deep conditioner. This is from AG. This is the Nourish Mask. This is super moisturizing. This is a protein-free deep conditioner. It's just for moisture. It's really great at softening the hair. It's really easy to detangle with, and it also helps me a lot with frizz. It also helps to soften the coarse areas of my hair, so I really like that about it. But conditioning your hair is so important for tangling wet frizz because after you shampoo your cuticle is kind of like standing up on end which is why I mentioned it's sort of like velcro so you have to have that conditioner afterwards or that deep conditioner to then 
lower that cuticle and just smooth the cuticle and coat the hair. I also really recommend combing your conditioner through even with some water because you wanna make sure you're fully coating every single hair with conditioner because a lot of times when you just sort of glaze it over the surface, you're not getting it on every hair. So that can lead to a lot of wet frizz poking through from underneath. Then you wanna make sure you fully rinse out your deep conditioner, make sure you get it all off your scalp. And then I like to take my fingers and just lift the hair up off the scalp. I also like to run my hands through. This just keeps it from sticking together and tangling up and getting frizzy as it's starting to dry and before I put my products in. This is gonna help make styling a lot easier too when the hair isn't all matted up from being in your hair towel. You like to scrunch it to get the excess water out. Just scrunching like this is going to prevent frizz instead of like twisting or wringing it out that's just going to cause frizz. I had to show you this before and after because it's really crazy the difference that this deep conditioner makes in my hair. Look how frizzy and matted it was before and then how shiny and defined it is afterward. Then I'm wrapping my hair up in this hair towel from Buclem. I highly recommend finding a hair towel like this that is flat cotton. It feels like a t-shirt or a very thin sheet instead of a microfiber towel. I personally find that microfiber towels still cause wet frizz because they still have little tiny fibers. So it's finally time to style, but first I'm going to spritz my hair down with some water. I'm using a spray bottle from Buclem. I highly recommend having a spray bottle on hand when you're styling because that's gonna help with wet frizz tremendously. Your hair needs to be evenly wet when you're applying your styling products. Now, I don't apply my products on soaking wet hair, just damp, but I make sure it's evenly wet. You see how there's still some areas that have wet frizz because it's starting to dry or it's not wet enough? Just make sure you fully get it wet and detangled before you apply your styling products because a lot of times the wet frizz is just hair that's starting to dry or it's just tangles that are formed in the hair. Now I'm going in with the Olaplex number no. nine, which is a really interesting product. This is like a serum consistency, but it's not an oil. It's also silicone free. This is a weightless leave-in that's supposed to shield your hair from pollution, also from heat. So this is a heat protectant up to 450 degrees. It still has that bond building technology in it. So it's still going to repair your hair from damage, but I've really been loving it as sort of like a primer step to reduce wet frizz. You can see the wet frizz just disappear and the shine come in when I apply this. It's really crazy. It also says that it's for anti-tingle and anti-static, which are all things that cause wet frizz. So I've really been loving this. I've been testing it out and I find that it works best to apply it to wet hair right before you go in and apply the rest of your styling products. I also like to comb it through to make sure it's evenly coated on every single strand. I also wanted to mention that the Olaplex number no. nine is just an extra step. It's not a required step by any means, but I have really been enjoying this product for taming wet frizz, so I still wanted to share it, but you don't have to use this step. So now I'm gonna go in with my curl cream. I always like to do a curl cream in a gel, although a gel is definitely the most important. But this is one of my favorite curl creams from Bounce Curl. This is the Avocado and Rose Oil Clump and Define Cream. This definitely helps clump your curls. It helps give you more curl definition. And this also helps me a lot with shine. I really like curl creams that have just a little bit of oil in them just to help out my coarse areas of my hair that feel very just dry and brittle and tend to frizz up a lot, especially with wet frizz. Dialing in the upright position can also really help reduce wet frizz in my opinion, because when I style upside down, my hair really just sticks to the scalp, it sticks to itself. I end up with lots of tangles and then that just leads to so much wet frizz. I will show you some tips at still achieving volume while you're upright. Now this is probably the most important step for reducing frizz overall and especially wet frizz is applying a medium to stronghold gel. This is the Curlsmith Curl Defining Styling Souffle. This is a medium but buildable hold gel. I usually reach for this in the fall and in the winter time because this is excellent at moisture retention. It really helps keep that moisture in my hair for long lasting curls so I don't have to really refresh that much with this and my hair lasts a lot longer. So I like to apply this in sections because you wanna make sure that you're evenly applying your gel. If you're leaving the underside layers untouched and you're just sort of scrunching in some gel, you could have a lot of wet frizz poking through. 
One other thing I wanted to mention is make sure that your gel is strong hold or at least a medium hold. Anytime I've used a light hold gel, I get so much wet frizz and that's usually an indicator that it's not enough hold and that it's going to dry frizzy and it almost always does whenever I see a lot of wet frizz. And you'll notice I'm also doing some brush styling which is one of the best ways to tame wet frizz because it smooths the curls out. So let me just show you the difference. So this is how a clump of curls looks before brush styling. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my gel and make sure that it's nice and wet and then if you look closely at the hair see how some of the hairs kind of stick out that's where there is tangles in the hair but they're just small little tangles that actually look like frizz so brush styling just smooths all of that out it just helps create a smoother curl that prevents wet frizz especially if you have areas of your hair that are coarse like mine those really are hard to smooth out and the brush styling really helps also if you have any gray areas this can really help with that too and it just helps smooth the curl and clump it better instead of having those smaller hairs that are tangled up within the curl clump. Just look at the difference that brush styling makes with wet frizz. It's pretty crazy. If you don't have time to brush style your whole head, I totally understand. You can actually do this method where you just brush an entire section up and back. This is also the best way to create volume if you are going to style upright. You could do an entire section at once and then just be sure to kind of separate it afterwards because you don't want to have too thick of curl clumps. So you could either use your fingers or use a comb to separate the section afterwards. But I definitely do do this if I'm in a hurry or just to also help with root covering and scalp covering in the back. I just do an entire section at once, or you could just brush style problem areas, maybe the face framing pieces instead of your whole head. Next up is to scrunch, but I have a way of scrunching that I wanted to show you that doesn't cause frizz. So this method I originally found from Natural Freckles and Curls, she calls it the wet micro method. And this is where you take a plastic shower cap and use that to scrunch your hair. This is genius because Typically when you scrunch with your hands or even a hair towel, you can get frizz. So this is a way to scrunch to define your curls and also help just the products absorb better into your hair when you're scrunching. You can spray the shower cap with water or even apply a little bit of gel. I've tried that too or you don't have to do anything at all and just use the plastic cap. And because plastic is not going to stick to your wet hair, it doesn't cause any frizz because your hands can stick and that can cause frizz, same with a towel. Now I do still recommend scrunching with the towel to reduce your dry time, but another trick you can try is spritz your towel with some water or just use an area of the towel that's pretty damp and that will help prevent the towel from absorbing too much product. And this will also help prevent wet frizz because anytime you touch your hair with something that's dry, like dry hands or a dry towel on wet hair, that's what leads to frizz. But if both things are wet, that's not gonna cause frizz but you're still able to scrunch out some of the excess water and product, but not too much. You should try it out if you haven't already. Typically, I'll just reach for like the wettest spot of my towel, but if my towel is not very wet, I'll just spritz it with some water, and this helps tremendously. You get those really nice juicy curl clumps and barely any wet frizz. If you do have some frizz showing through right now, then you can glaze in another layer of gel. So I'm just showing you up close. I do still have some frizz. Like I said before, you're not gonna completely get rid of it. That's totally okay. But if you want to just reduce it, these are some things that you can try. So just spritz your hair with some water and then glaze a little bit of gel on top. You can even kind of finger coil some of those frizzy pieces. Sometimes I'll even use my brush just to touch up any pieces that are just not cooperating and still look very frizzy, but I don't worry about it too much. As long as I get most of it, it'll be fine by the time it dries. You can also skip scrunching altogether. I've seen some people try out the no scrunch method and they've had a lot of success with reducing wet frizz by not scrunching at all. Let me know if I should try that out. Tell me in the comments below. But now I'm ready to diffuse my hair, which is the last step. I definitely recommend diffusing over air drying. I get so much frizz when I air dry. If you're not already diffusing and you're struggling with your hair frizzing up or if you're not getting a gel cast, definitely try out diffusing. This is the Curlsmith Diffrision Hair Dryer. This helps reduce my dry time significantly significantly. So many of you are always asking which dryer I prefer and I've definitely been preferring this one recently because I don't have to use high heat and yet it still dries my hair fast. I think because of the extremely large diffuser head size it covers more surface area at once. So I can link you to it down below but I have some other cheaper recommendations as well but this one's definitely been my favorite. So here are my final results. Little to no frizz. I just have some around the top of my head but that's totally okay. We're not going to completely get rid of frizz. So I hope you found this routine 
routine helpful. I'm going to link all of the products that I use in the description box down below. And I will also include some of those alternative products that I mentioned as well. And if you still need more help with your wet frizz, I recommend checking out the first video that I did on wet frizz a while back. That is loaded with lots of things that you can try and different causes of wet frizz in much more detail. And I talk about the science behind why wet frizz occurs. So I'll have that video linked here on the screen and I'll talk to you over there. Bye everyone.